close your eyes and watch your breath. Make up your mind that for the sake of training your mind, you're going to stay right here. Because the mind does need to be trained. It's like a little puppy. If you don't train it, it can create all kinds of messes in your life, tearing up things that otherwise would be useful. So if you train it to have some restraint, what things should be taken, what things should not be taken, what things should be thought about, what thoughts you can put aside, then the mind becomes really useful. And then you can use it for really good purposes. One of it is for the purpose of true happiness. The happiness goes, goes really deep. That's totally blameless. It's actually free, and it depends on developing your own skills inside, but you don't have to buy it from anybody or rent it from anybody. It's all based on your own inner resources. You've got the breath, you've got the sense of the body, you've got your awareness. These things are yours. So put them together so they can grow. And this way we show respect for a really deep wish in our heart, which is a happiness that lasts, and happiness that doesn't harm anybody. This is something you should respect. This is one of the reasons why you bow down to the Buddha. You have a lot of respect for him because he shows us, one, that that happiness is real, and two, that we can get it. And it really is a worthwhile goal, because there's so much in life that tells us otherwise, that true happiness isn't really real, and buy our goods instead, make yourself happy. Those are the people trying to make you miserable inside, so you can take advantage of that. It's going to be especially bad now at this time of year. The season is starting. Now is the season to be greedy. That's what people want out of you. But is that what you want for your own sake? And the answer is, of course, no. You want something better. So you want to have some respect for that. They may tell you that true happiness is impossible. But the Buddha says it is. This is why we bow down to him, to remind ourselves again and again and again of the example that he set, that true happiness is something harmless and is something that can be found inside. And we have it within our power to do it. So we want to keep those thoughts in mind, and remember that meditation is one of the ways of doing it, along with virtue and generosity. These are how we find happiness within. In other words, it doesn't come from getting, it comes from giving. And then what you get, that comes from what you give, that has a lot more solid value, the things that just come floating your way. So bow down to your, your desire for true happiness. Bow down to your ability to find that. Show respect for the fact that you're a human being who has these capabilities. That'll help you withstand a lot of the pressures that come from outside, that just think of you as a member of the economy and nothing better. You have something higher in life. You have the, the goodness of the heart that doesn't want to be harmful. But you also have that thirst inside. You want a happiness that you can depend on, so happiness is not going to turn on you. And the Buddha says these things are are worth maintaining, worth protecting. So bow down to your human capabilities, bow down to your desire for happiness that can be found through human capabilities. By bowing down, we can give them priority, make them important, and the rest of the life can sort itself out as of lesser importance, but make sure that your desire for true happiness always comes first.